I was completing a Magoosh practice quant section for my channel and I've released a video recently and I came across a question where I used an amazing shortcut called Pythagorean triples and I realized as I was talking about it that I hadn't done a video on this. So I thought what better opportunity than to teach you about Pythagorean triples which can save 30 to 60 seconds if it comes up compared to if you didn't know the trick. So it's a really good one to know and quite a quick one to teach. What am I talking about? First of all, it's not just the basic Pythagorean formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Just very quickly, if you don't know that, for right angled triangles, the two shorter sides called A and B, if you square them up, the two shorter sides of the triangle and add up the two results, you get the hypotenuse, the longer side squared. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But that takes 30 seconds to type into the calculator for the GRE, or maybe 45 seconds to work out on your own for the GMAT. If we could save that time and get the answer in three seconds, wouldn't that be amazing? 30, 40 seconds saved is maybe one more correct answer later in the test. As I've written, time is money, so let's start saving it. What are these triples I'm talking about? Well, here they are. 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, and 7, 24, 25. And I've underlined the hypotenuse in each of these three triples. There are more triples in existence, but these are the only three that I've ever seen tested in the GRE or GMAT. So these are the three that I want to focus on. And what's so special about them? Well, three and four, to take the first case, if you square them up and add them, it does equal five. So three, four, and five form a perfect Pythagorean triangle where three and four would be the two shorter sides and five would be the hypotenuse. You might think, well, isn't this true of all numbers? No, you try it. Six squared plus seven squared doesn't equal eight squared. It's only for special triplets that this works. And one of them is three, four, and five. The next one is 5, 12, 13. 25 plus 144 does equal 169. In fact, you can check out any of these three triples on the calculator if you don't fully believe me. You don't have to memorize these just based on trust. They all work out perfectly. So how is it that they save so much time though? Well, take the triangle on the left. And the question is, what is the area of the triangle below? Well, to find the area of this triangle, we need to find the side on the left. That will be the height of the triangle. But we can see that 25 and 24 are two of the sides of our third Pythagorean triple, 7, 24, 25. Meaning that our missing side has to be, that's right, has to be seven to complete the triangle, the 7, 24, 25 Pythagorean triple. And if that side is seven, the area of the triangle would of course be seven times 24 divided by two. 24 divided by two just quickly is 12, seven times 12 is 84. Now I know what question you've got. Wow, Philip, this is amazing. Is every right angle triangle a Pythagorean triple? No, for about half of the questions on the test, they'll expect you to use a calculator and work it out either with decimals or with radicals roots, for example. Not every right angled triangle you see on the test will be a Pythagorean triple, but it often comes up as you saw in my Magoosh quant walkthrough and actually in my real test as well. So this doesn't work for every right angled triangle, but it is really handy if one of these triples come up. Now you're thinking, well, I've learned everything, right? Here are the three triples. I've memorized them. I'm sure you all have memorized them by now. What's the point of the rest of the video? Well, there's one more thing I want to talk about. You can have multiples of these triples. Take this triangle here. The question is, what is the perimeter of the triangle below? And we have two of the sides, 10 and 24, and we'd rather not use a calculator or use our mental math to work out the hypotenuse. But 10 and 24 aren't two of the sides in our Pythagorean triples, are they? We have five and 12, we have seven and 24, but we don't have 10 and 24. But you might notice that 10 and 24 
use the second triple, 5, 12, 13, except doubled. The 5 doubles to get 10, and the 12 doubles to get 24. That means the hypotenuse is just 13 doubled, 26. Any multiple of these three triples also counts as a triple. That's definitely something worth writing down with a few examples. Take that first triple, 3, 4, 5. If we double it, that's also a triple, 6, 8, 10. Check it out, 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. Or if we trebled it, 9, 12, 15, that's also a triple. So that's the power of these three triples. It's not just that they're three simple examples to memorize, it's all the multiples of these triples. Going back to this triangle, we notice that 10 is five doubled, 12 times two is the 24, meaning the third side has to be 13 doubled, 26. And that's the hardest bit about Pythagorean triples. If they use a multiple of one of the triples, you have to spot which triple they have multiplied. Speaking of which, we're gonna to get to the final question, and this time I'm not gonna show you the triples on the screen. Oh yeah, the perimeter here was 10 plus 24 plus 26, the three sides of the triangle added up. I'm not gonna show you the triples because by now I expect you to have memorized them. Your job is to spot which triplet has been multiplied to form each of these triangles. I recommend that you pause the video, try your best to find X and Y here, and then report back to me in the comments how you found it, rather than just watch me do it, <laughs> which is the easy option. Okay, let's do the first one. We have X, 55, and 143. Let's take the easier number, 55. Which triple does that fit into? It can't be the three, four, five triple, because 55 here is one of the shorter sides, and 55 is not a multiple of either three or four. Let's try the next triple. That's five, 12, and 13. Well, 55 is a multiple of five, not a multiple of 12, so it's a multiple of five. In fact, it's five times 11. So let's check if the hypotenuse, 143, is also a multiple of 11. It is indeed, it's 13 times 11. So I think we've found the right triple. It was the 5, 12, 13 triplet multiplied by 11. The 5 times 11 gets 55. The 13 times 11 gets 143, meaning the x, the missing length, must be 12 times 11. That's 132. So x is 132 without any calculator being used. Let's try that for the next triangle y, 8, and 10. Let's take the 8 here. That is a multiple of 3 or 4. It's a multiple of 4 in the 3, 4, 5 triangle. It's 4 times 2. And 10, the hypotenuse, is 5 times 2. So I think we found the right triplet straight away. It was a 3, 4, 5 triplet. 3 doubled to get 6, which must be y. 4 doubled to get 8. And 5 doubled to get 10. So the multiple was 2 here giving us y equals six. So again, it was the three, four, five triplet here. Finally, if x is 132 and y is six, the question was asking for the product of x and y. Product means multiplied, and therefore six times 132 is 792, which is the answer. And that sums up what I want you to take away from this video. Yes, I want you to memorize those three triplets, the famous ones, three, four, five, five, 12, 13, and 7, 24, and 25. But I also want you to write down and remember that the examples in the test may well be multiples of these, like 55, 132, 143, or 6, 8, and 10. They don't just have to use the original numbers, they can use multiples. And that's the most interesting bit, spotting how the original triples have been multiplied to get the new triangles. At the highest level of the GRE and GMAT, they can use really big numbers like these, 55 and 143. But if you do spot which multiple it is, you've just saved 30 to 60 seconds, which is extremely handy under the time pressure of these exams. I really hope this helped. See you in the next video.